It's my enormous pleasure to welcome our first speaker to talk about a compassionate Spanish city, Dr Emilio Herrera, President of the New Health Foundation in Spain and of course our keynote speaker tomorrow. Please make him welcome. Well, thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone and thanks for coming. Um, I really would like to express my deepest gratitude for the, to the Congress organisation for having for having invited us to come here to share with you all our dream that was to, to, to have Sevilla, that is the main capital in the south of Spain, to become a compassionate city. So let's begin by thinking that we are sharing globally the same context of huge prevalence of chronic diseases and personal disabilities. So for that, we created this New Health Foundation with the, with the trying to help build a society committed to the care and attention of those who need it most. Uh, we really try to create a more person-centered integrated care and for that we created three programs. We were trying to help building excellent palliative care units, palliative care teams, palliative care regional programs from the axis, from the perspective of the healthcare sector. But at the same time, we were promoting social care. We were pretty convinced that without social care, the chronic disease cannot be helped at all. So we created another program developing social care. And more than that, we were absolutely began to be committed to create a more compassionate uh, society. And for that, we selected some programs as this one that I'm going to show that is creating compassionate communities with all of you. So in the time allotted to me, I will, um, I will separate my presentation into three parts. First of all, I will reflect in the condition that this is a global phenomenon. This is like WhatsApp. It is fastly running around the world. Secondly, I will, I will go deeper in the methodology that we are using in different parts of the world. And third, after all, I will be presenting some of the aims that we have been achieving lately. So let's begin. So we, the world, seven billion lives that silently cry over losing an important part of their social identity. The isolation is one of the most common problems when one becomes fragile or when one gets elder. And this is a global phenomenon. So probably that's time to join forces. That's time to begin building networks. But, but like this spider web, it can be really full of identity, like a, like a brand. But on the other hand, it can be really subtle and fragile. So this is something really delight. So maybe it is time to switch around the me for the we. And maybe this is part of the secret. We were absolutely convinced about that. So we began working with people that were working from this perspective all over the world. So we began discovering some of the brilliant experiences that people were working like in here. I met some very interesting people in the Public Health and Palliative Care International that some of you, as Professor Bruce Rumble, know very well, or Michael Brownwell. Brand and the thing is that uh, there I met, for example, Alan Kelleher, who is the president of these associations, and some of you know him very well. And he is brilliant and he has been forcing this idea for a long time. And I think that now probably it's the time for that. Probably previously it was 
really easy, I would say, or really soon for that. So now we are able to understand what means to be using the Charter for Compassion in Palliative Care that he has been publishing. We are talking not only about developing policies towards palliative care or assuring access to palliative care resources, but also being respecting social and cultural differences and especially promoting awareness campaigns about compassion, community, and grieving. So this is, for example, the marvelous experience that Suresh Kumar began to run in Kerala. It is in the south of India. They have 90 billion people there. And actually, Suresh has been working with more than 50,000 volunteers. He has been working with more than 250,000 families of people helping one to others. In people where there were no nurses or doctors, so this is not only a problem of funding. This is a problem of creating a we. This is the other experience of people like uh, Kathy McLaughlin or Jim Harrigan that has been working from the Milford Center in Ireland in a wonderful project that are sharing international some of the tools, some of the one I'm going to share with you at the end of my presentation. That is the Bill's story. That I don't know if you know that. They are trying to begin, to become a, a compassionate city also in Limerick. And these are the other group of people like Denise Marshall, who is leading the movement of compassionate cities in Canada. Actually, the next international uh, congress of the Public Health and Palliative Care International Association is going to take place in Canada in Ottawa next year. So we're formally inviting you to go. So the thing is that. There are another group of people who are in Europe trying to get some grants, maybe crazy people, um, just to promote the idea of compassionate cities working together and learning as a learning network. So we, we, are, we, we had people from, from uh, England, people from Limerick, from, from Spain, Austria, Germany. So this is a global phenomenon and you are in the right track, absolutely. Probably in a more advanced position, I will tell you about that tomorrow, than the rest, because of re the framework documents that you are beginning to have very clear in mind. We are helping others. They had also problems of funds. In Medellin, as a compassionate city in Colombia, we are helping also Cali, to become a compassionate city. They are a really humble foundation, but they are getting wonderful results. We are helping people who are working in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. They are doing fantastic work with uh, medical students. In some of the subjects, they go to practice. Instead of going with the white coat to the hospital, they take out their white coats and go to the home of patients to be supporting them for a, for a month and living with them and understanding what it means to be really a doctor. This is beautiful. We are learning from them. We are not teaching them. We are learning from them. And this is the experiences that are beginning to take place also in Brazil, or in the north of Spain, in Vitoria. Not Victoria, Vitoria. <laughs> they have been working for the last three years. We are now learning from them, helping them, supporting them, but learning from their experience. Also now they are beginning in Pamplona, but they have been a long time working with children at the school with the project SEMAS, that is like be more than that. Or now Badajoz is beginning to be in the west of Spain. So to summarize this part, there is a global phenomenon happening around the world, absolutely convinced that palliative care has to be more than a wonderful specialty and that belongs to the society by itself. So now let me move on to the second part. How do we understand what is a, pa a compassionate city? The movement Todos Contigo, that means something like we are all with you, uh, try to be a global community united by the vocation of caring. What we try to get is a different and involved society with a sustainable social model, retrieving the value of caring and getting an enduring story, a legacy that can grow, believing in our meaning as human beings. 
this is not talking about profession, but it could be talking about vocation. But vocation as human beings, servicing, giving service to others. Of course, we created our own methodology, and we are following that. Not rigidly, we are flexible about that, but we have like a really methodic uh, way to follow, just for people to be more relaxed, you know, not to be scared about the way to follow, just to have a guideline. But after all, we have to be adapting that, tailoring that to every context. So we began, we began analyzing the context, mapping stakeholders, then designing the solution for every context, for every city. Then after we began implementing, or after all, we're trying to evaluate the impact. This is the way. This is pretty common to every one of our projects. But what is really different here is that we are not really implementing projects. We are promoting social movements, but it's something really different. For that, we, we don't do anything strange, funny, difficult. We, we just do uh, raise awareness to people. We just give talks, workshops, conferences, raising awareness, or we go into the stage of being training people, training citizens, training professionals, giving courses, train the trainers, encounters, and creating materials and resources. And after all, we try to evaluate the needs, to identify the needs in every community, and then to implement the role of the facilitators and then the role of the neighborships associations. So this is how a compassionate with you city work, more or less. But I want you to understand that this is like a kind of a simple picture, prepared to be explaining to techniques like us, how is that going to work? We don't go with this to the, to the citizen, because actually, we actually hope that it will be something different to that. But for example, this is a case of a person that could be, be detected as a person that could be needing to be discharged from a hospital. So the case is detected by a palliative care team from a health center, from a hospital. Then, when, before they are going to be discharged, they call to the social worker from the city council. So they are in the social care setting. They are in the other sector. So they activate facilitators who are people who have been trained in being taken in contact getting in contact with the personal social networks of the patients. So the facilitator go there and ask to the family, neighbors, and friends of the patients to get involved in the case, will come in the patients as, after having been discharged. In the case the family, for example, are not trained, they try to give them some training and to be supporting them. But in case, for example, they don't have enough family to be supporting the case, they will activate the other branch that is going to collaborate in centers that are centers which are contributing with uh, associations of neighbors, of volunteers, who are going to be activated to be helping the people at home. So as you can see, this is a very simple model. So we, we actually didn't do anything really different, but what we are trying is to share a common mission, that is to have a city conducting these kinds, providing these kinds of I would say, perspective. So at the very end, the stakeholders that we have in a compassionate city with you is having a number of members of collaborating centers that could be contributing with associations that are going to be trained to be creating, for example, volunteers, group of volunteers, but we're going to have professional experts like you that are going to be training them in different contexts. And we have uh, care clusters that citizen, citizens are, are, are beginning to create, and then our uh, professional colleagues, and then um, beneficiary centers, like, for example, hospices, nursing homes, residential care centers, that can be using those uh, help when they need it. So they are activating the network every time they need it. And after all, of course, we need the support of the municipality, of the, of the city council. So this is, kind, this is like a kind of an all-together program. It's everyone's responsibility to have that kind of programs. So 
how on earth can we try to involve all parties in the governance of this project? We are beginning to create now this steering group where, for example, the, the private companies who are giving us some financial support are taking part of that, but also university and also the city council. And they are all uh, like providing not only financial sustainability, but monitoring the results and seeing if we are taking, if we are really carrying out uh, the, the, the program that we have, the action plan. So let me share with you some of the results that we have been achieving this last year. I, I think that I have to admit that no one, as you know very well, is a prophet in their own land. So we were really scared about that. Uh, it is more easy for us, it's easier for us to be helping others than to be implementing this project. But in this year, we have been getting an enormous result, thanks to especially this team. This is our team. They have been working on every activity with passion and giving the best of themselves. The young people, except, except me, probably. And we have been able to involve more than 22 organizations on that, public and private organizations, professional colleges. We have been getting the support of the city council and, and the mayor publicly, saying, I really, I'm really committed to this. And we have been carrying out a number of events, using even the local identity, working in this case with flamenco workshops, where more than 40 elder women were working, trying to involve younger ch children to participate on it. And it was major, beautiful, and it was really emotional. And we were creating the language of care the hand that can hold, the hand which accompanies, the hand which plays. It was more than 2,000 photos taken by people that were sending to a co-produced platform, web platform. We have been giving conferences for more than 2,500 2, people. We have been promoting photo contests. We have been promoting the involvement of restaurants promoting, in this case, the route of the tapa and the proxies that we are getting were going to be supporting other actions. We have been promoting also supporting events, or we have been working with local artists, and it was amazing. They were asking two people to participate creating a huge human web, entangling themselves with people passing by. And they were wearing fantastic T-shirts, saying things like this, I am with you, I am with you, besides you, please don't be frightened, you are my life, I'm all what I love, I will take care of you, because I'm thinking you, because you really privilege my life. This is being a human being. We were all the time bearing in mind our loved ones. We have been working with awareness campaigns in schools in more than 11 districts, and we have been achieving more than 1,200 students. For example, these are fantastic pictures of some of the outcomes working with 10 years old children. For example, there you can read in Spanish uh, the, a paper written by a girl, this young girl saying, I can help my grandmother. I can accompany her, I can give her my love, I can make her feel better, I can take care of her. And in the picture you can see that she is thinking on her grandma who was lying at bed before dying. And her mother was taking care of her. And after that, he, she wrote something like saying, there is a long time still to live. And this is wonderful to have a children, a child, saying something like that. Okay. We have been working with university. We have been promoting workshops with citizens in every district. And hopefully in the next year, we will have a number of actions also that I don't want to take too much time doing that because I would really would like to share with you a small uh, film of three minutes only. But I want you to see that we have an action plan for the next year. We need to be structured, you know. We have been trained to that. 
but hopefully it will be more than that, more than actions. It will be a dream. Let me share with you this small bill story. And after that, I will finish with only two slides, Julie, if you allow me. This is the movie that we usually use to raise awareness. It was written in English, but everyone understands that, even in the south of Spain. So please be attentive to that. This is global, that will go on, and go on, and go on. So is it not worthwhile? I think that maybe it was really difficult to achieve, but we really did it because we didn't want that it was impossible. And we really think that is, it is really worthwhile because it is not relative to others. This is relative to ours, to ourselves. This could be the society that we can help. 
to build. We all have lived difficult moments because of health problems in a loved way. Maybe it is time to change the way to address together the last moments of life. Probably when they say no one can do anything, we, the we, can make the difference. So, humble from the bottom of our heart, you know, know very well that you have a civilian team working with you in the other part of the world. Thank you very much.